All right, squiddies, I guess it's time to go. I've eaten one of your buddies. <laughs> but uh, yeah, sorry about that. But we'll untie from here and we'll make our way uh, out a bit further, I think. So it's been a good morning in the end. I've had a lovely time. Sort of uh, what seemed to be a bit uh, void of fish is turned into be like just a great morning with the squiddies coming to the party. But I think it's time to move on and try and take advantage of this amazing weather because, uh, yeah, straight out there somewhere, that's where it's all going to happen. Well, maybe not, but what I do want to do is get back to where I did fish that day because it was pretty amazing. It was an amazing spot. It's too bad it was blowing like 50 k's an hour. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, nah, it's well worth going out there. There's this channel in between that I'd really wanted to just at least get back and see. And uh, there's a funny story about when I'm out, when I was out there. So when you follow what this, not this sand K, but the next sand K along, you follow it all the way out to this outer reef, right? It takes quite a long time to get there, especially in a 3.3 meter inflatable with a 15 horsepower. And then the morning started off pretty reasonable, but I knew I had enough petrol just to get there. So I raced out there, and as soon as I get out there, the wind picks up something horrendous. And then just as I get there, I, I start casting at a point, and this huge, like, uh, super marlin boat, like this massive marlin boat comes past, and he just pulls up next to me, and he must have been thinking, well, look at this idiot. What is this, what is this guy even doing out here? He's going to die, which is not too far from the truth, to be honest. But um, he yelled out from, like, he was in the crow's nest up the top, and he yells out, he goes, is that Rocket? So he's recognised me, and he's come over to say hi. And I think, I don't know if I've still got it, but he sent me the footage, actually, of him sort of filming that. It wasn't it wasn't that great, you know what I mean? But he just obviously got a couple of snaps of me coming fast. So I'll see if I can dig out the footage and put it in now. But uh, it was a funny experience. I probably had my closest chances out there to get a GT. I had a couple of come in. I had one decent hit. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, damn. <laughs> Yowch. Well, something had a little swipe then. But I never managed to sort of hold on to them. And it was really, because it was all rough and gross, it was really hard to see which way the current was going. I, I was just fishing blind and in the in the wind, it was, it was horrendous, basically. And then I had to come back in on side to the wind. So I got smashed so hard that my eyes were so bloodshot by the time I got in. I was pretty much out of fuel. And then I had to get back in further. And that's when the real problem started. So... Let's just get out there and enjoy the morning. Hopefully it doesn't turn into that, but if this boat, I'm sure, would just lap it up compared to the other boat. But uh, let's get out there, have a couple more mouthfuls of squid. I almost finished it, but there's a little bit left. And then, yeah, let's go. Let's see, uh, let's bring back some bad memories. <laughs> Before we go anywhere though, we need to check on our fuel sitch. <laughs> I know this one's out. So I switched over to the other tank yesterday. Okay, it's still got a bit in it, but I don't like to, it sucks when you run out completely and it drains, it gets an air bubble in the tube because then you've got to muck around and get fuel on you. Okay, that's one done. Yeah, always good to have the fuel into the main tanks where you can actually access it easy. Because I'll touch on that later on with a little story. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's good to have the fuel where you need it because when they're in these things and you run into a big storm, they're not much good to you. <laughs> glass out here. Doesn't last for long but just glass in this pocket. Wow. 
just coming a bit closer to where I want to be, but then I'm just seeing these little outcrops and I can see there's disturbance. There's definitely things going on. Might as well have a little cast over it. Let's see if we can see something. We'll start with this little lure. This could be a mistake. <laughs> but, you know. Oh, not the best cast, but anyway. It's definitely bait on the surface. Something's going on. If we see something interesting, we'll get the big lure, the big gear out, I guess, as well. Wow. Okay, so here's the point we're about to come up over the rise now, I think. Oh boy, wow, look at that. Look at that. Holy smokes. That's just epic in every way. Wow. I never saw any of this before because <laughs> Wow, let's just give the motor and just stick on it for a sec. I never saw any of this before because it was so rough that I couldn't see into the water. <laughs> wow. Ooh, is that something... Is that something having a go? Or is that just my lure coming out of the water? Bit exciting, isn't it? Oh! Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, that was a good hit. Trouty? Not trouty. Cod. Ooh. Wow. Oh, did I even click my thing on? I don't think I did. I might have missed that. I only just clicked the camera on now. Good cod. He came out of nowhere and walloped it. Hopefully, I got the hit. <laughs> Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Alright. Geez, he's not happy about this. <laughs> Alright, mate. Yeah, I'm gonna get you back in. I'm gonna get you back in. As quick as possible. Okay. Well, it's not a bad looking card. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, buddy. What a beauty. First fish out on the big reef. Woo! Alright. Oh, back you guys. How good is it out here? It's unbelievable in fact. I can't believe I could be just... There's one of hopefully many. Let's keep casting. Might cast over there in a sec with the bigger rig. See if we can see if there's any GCs or something hanging around. Oh, look at that guy. Look, a little trevally. Look, he came all the way out. Look. Look, he's right there. I don't know if you can see him. Yeah, let's cast this out. He's not big, but I'd be pretty wrapped to catch him. Might get some attention. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of indifference in there. Not really much current here, that's for sure. It's definitely bait though. There we go, I've one more one, we'll cast over there and then we'll move up to where we wanted to be. Jeez, it's good though. So good. Looks amazing.
gotcha. Whoa, look at the size of that clam. That is massive. That's like over a metre wide. <laughs> oh boy. Wow. Fox faces. Look at those peat parrots. Oh man. <laughs> this is unbelievable, isn't it? They're that sensitive that they know that like that that's one tiny oh jeez oh jeez that's something oh no 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 this is gonna be a problem actually I think I've got the small rod no, it's not too big I don't think oh what is it don't go down don't go down oh no he's getting me in the reef no oh he's definitely getting me in the reef now uh oh all I can do is pull this closer and try and untangle it oh should have had the trolling motor up, shouldn't I? Oh, still on. Oh, he pinged it. Oh, I wonder what it was. Oh, look at the size of that barracuda there as well. That's not him though. He went way down deep. I threw this little one around thinking it might be a good idea just to get some attention. That was stupid. Just didn't expect to get anything, to be honest. It's hard to tell how big that was. But they were hanging out with this bait out here, so. Let's have another crack. This time, I won't be over the edge. I probably should get the uh, trolling motor out, actually. See the size of that big barracuda just looming, waiting for, waiting for the action? Whew! I thought I'd just come out and check out the outside rim, but yeah, it's not filling me with much. Uh, I thought there might be a bit more current, so I'm thinking maybe we go back in and just jump in the water, find somewhere to anchor up. Might be uh, a bit more interesting. And then we can still, like, we've had some luck in there anyway, so we definitely keep casting around. This edge just looks pretty good and uh, there is patches where I could anchor. Might need to find just a slightly shallower sort of edge maybe in there and then work my way around. Just gonna make my mind up whether this was the best one. Uh, might be a bit corallier than I thought. We could just put it right in those patches of sand in there maybe. Oh this one looks good. This is right here, just here. That's all just rubble and sand. You can just drop it in there. Let's get in the water and check it out. I don't know, the fishing seems pretty slow. I've had more casts than I've probably shown you. And uh, this just looks pretty epic as well. So I want to get in and just see if there's any more bigger fish like coral trout and things like that around. Might take one for dinner. If not, if it's a parrotfish affair, then maybe that.
Club. We've just jumped out. Yeah, it's it's good, but it's not actually as it doesn't seem as lively and as abundant. It's a very different kind of reef because it's kind of the flats and then it drops off. So you can feel as soon as you hop in, there's a lot of current ripping back this way, and um, and it's pretty silty and things coming off here. So it's a very just it's different kind of edge, and it's it's sort of attracting a different kind of life. Those fusies at the end were really cool though, and um. I saw some really big clams. Some of those clams are like um, over a meter wide. They're really cool. But what I might do is I'm going to jump back in and I think I might go and head back over to where I first sort of hit the edge of the reef because I think it looked clearer and there's a bit more plate coral and things like that. It looked like a more sort of a little bit more abundant actually. All right, where to? Somewhere. <laughs> Is that bait or current or I think it's bait and current? What is that? I think it's bait. But it's, it's getting pushed down in a current line, I think. So oh <laughs> Yeah, that's fusies feeding. But oh is that a current line as well? Maybe we should have a cast on that. Geez, they're really getting pushed up against it, aren't they? Look how many fuses there are. That whole line is just all of them. It's definitely a serious school of bait. If it was any kind of predator around, you'd like to think that they'll be hanging around this. <laughs> Woo! It's a serious bait school. Looks like a pretty cool little patch of reef as well. Ooh, there's definitely something zipping around there. I don't know whatever that was. What are they? They almost look like they could be mackerel. Like a bad fish, huh? Not a bad fish at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the hook just fell out, but that's perfect timing. <laughs> that's a beauty. That's a beauty of a fish. Ah, uh, well, we might as well uh, do a water release then, eh? Okay, buddy, come on, I'll get you back in. Oh. He's gonna go. He's gonna go. Don't get this one down. Oh, you silly fish. You're actually fine. You're out for two seconds. Yeah, I've got to go turn him upside down. Oh, look, oh, he's turning himself. He's turning himself. Come on, get going. You're out of the water for two seconds, buddy. Okay, there he is. Okay, finally. Jeez. <laughs> so I just caught that shark mackerel and um, on top water. It was awesome. Got him in and uh, released him in this camera i had not pressed the start button so i've got proof on this camera so you definitely see it but i guess you know what i'm going to try and catch another one then if they're around that was good a good capture but uh i cannot believe it after all of that i didn't actually get it on film anyway let's have another crack at that i'll change this battery and we'll keep casting here because there's obviously big mackerel zipping around come on see if we can reenact it <laughs> it's not a bad fish either. It's not really one I wanted to eat. And it was a bit too big for what I'm doing at the moment. And they eat they eat alright apparently. I've not tried one, but apparently if you leave them for like just a little bit, they're no good because they get this real ammonia kind of smell. But pretty cool to catch. You watch, I won't be able to catch one now. Oh, look at that. There's a mackerel just there. Okay, 
So they are still patrolling the area. What if I just go out and just bring this in in a big way? Hopefully they notice it. Come on. Can't seem to get another one though. Haven't had a follow or a mackerel sort of swim past for a while either. Alright, this is really the last cast. <laughs> <laughs> Unless a mackerel comes swimming on by, I'm gonna have to call it quits. Put many, many casts in there. Alright, bummer. Alright, well, we'll always have that one bit of video. <laughs> Proof! But it doesn't really cut it, does it? What an edge though, eh? Amazing. This spot looks a lot clearer. It's amazing the difference, like I've just come over one one sort of K or one big sort of atoll across and it's like amazingly clear here on this side. It must get the water from this side of the ocean and that one sort of feeding in from the other side or something really silty on the other side. It was a bit like, uh, it's nice but it's not that nice compared to where I was. So. Yeah, wanted to jump in here. So we'll give this a crack. I don't know if the coral looks any better, but I'll just work up on this edge and back around and see what it looks like. Definitely looks amazingly clear though.
stuff and then we'll hook it home and I'm just pumping water through here because I wanted to flush everything out and flush this whole section out Mango. Hey, I'm gonna get me one of them. That's what I'm making. A bit of shade seems alright, doesn't it? Some driving this looks all right doesn't it bit low tide though so usually there's water all the way up to there but <laughs> yeah no I've just pulled over done a hell of a lot of driving um, I've come all the way back down so probably just over maybe halfway back home so um, yeah no but it was the right time to get out of there I think because um, I'm realizing I'm kind of running on a bit of a, um, a bit of a time frame now that I've got to get back Okay, let's see how you're going. Oh, a little bit of ice melting, but it's been a long drive. No. Still ice in there, no problems. Come on, let's fillet you down. Ooh, that looks like a nice flat rock, doesn't it? There we go, perfect. Is we'll slide him off and we'll do him on the flat rock. We'll keep the board for the cleaning, the cleaner stage. That is a beautiful parrotfish. Slightly bigger, but that's all right. We'll take uh, some home because we're on the way back now. We can keep him uh, on ice as well, and we're taking some fish home for the family still. So nothing wrong with that. Bit bigger than I was hoping for <laughs> on the day, but um. Yeah, once those sharks turned up, I think I said it uh, yesterday, but it's just better. Look at those amazing uh, scars, pretty hefty. But yeah, no, that's, a, that's actually a pretty good fish, really. Now, parrotfish in certain areas are depleted, but in other areas, they're quite plentiful. And especially up in our part of the woods, not a big deal to take one. But don't take all of them, obviously. <laughs> Space it out. But delicious eating fish, actually. A very special fish to take. I don't take many parrots because they do take care of the reef. But if there's too many of them, they actually harm the reef because they start doing too much damage because they're overpopulated. So in somewhere like where we are, it's not that big a deal. But just something to be aware of. But we'll fill this guy down. This flesh is going to be really special. And obviously we'll bag some of the flesh up. 
take it home for the family and we'll make a delicious meal because I'm pretty hungry. I've been driving a good part of the day again. So I'm ready to go. And going through Bowen, which is the May mango capital of Australia, it got me excited for a bit of a mango salsa, which we'll do. Straight down the ribs. That's all just rib cage there. Scales are something else, aren't they? Look at the size of that fillet, though. That's like bigger than my hand. Look at that. Not bad. Pretty serious yield off this guy. Pretty sure I have some glad wrap in here somewhere. <laughs> it's no cryvac machine, but it will do the job till we get home. How much am I going to eat realistically? Probably, oh, maybe a little bit more than that. <laughs> that much with the salsa? Oh, shouldn't have done that anyway. Maybe that much. <laughs> Ruined my presentation already. We'll do those two. some good ingredients there for a delicious mango salad and I've got our fish but yeah Whew. okay yeah no well I hope you've been enjoying this series like I I think I ticked off where I wanted to get to I think I got to um, that special part on the reef but if you're wondering why I uh, ran away so quick and I said I would I'd tell you the story um, so any number of things had happened by this stage of the original film festival trip. On the drive up, the wheel had fallen off the back of the boat, so I was dealing with ramps with one wheel on the inflatable. The catch had sheared off that had held the motor up off the transom, so you couldn't actually just click it up to hold the motor up off the concrete. The fuel line cracked and broke off, so it sprayed like maybe five liters of um, two-stroke oil and petrol all over the boat, and it was, it was becoming a crazy trip. But anyway, on the last two days, I decided, bugger it, I'm going back to the sand K, the first sand K, and I'm going to do the big run out to the reef. I almost caught a fish there once, so let's get back there and have another crack at it. So I went all the way out there again. So fished it, weather was atrocious, like really bad, but I still was determined to just try and get that one GT or one good topwater fish. Anyway, eventually I had to call it quits. I was running low on petrol and it was getting late in the afternoon and the wind was just getting so bad. Made the huge run all the way back in along that huge long reef that gets all the way back to the sand K, that second sand K in. And I get to the sand K and I thought, okay, look, maybe I've got enough fuel to just stay out here for one last night. So I thought, yep, let's do it. So I stuck around for maybe another hour and over that hour, and by this stage it was probably about three in the afternoon, over that hour, the tide kept rising and rising. And the whole time I'd been there, it never actually went underwater. But anyway, this was the tide. And because the wind was so, and the waves were getting so rough, that this was the day that the sand cave was gonna go completely underwater. <laughs> so at the very last second, I was like, this thing's gonna go underwater. I gotta get out of here. So I made the very interesting decision and I didn't wanna, I thought the other sand cave is only six k's away. I can get to that even if it's a bit rough, I'll be able to get to six, it's only six Ks, but I thought I don't want to get there with only no wet, like no dry clothes. So I stripped down to my jocks and just had my life jacket and jocks on. So I jumped in the boat, I got just around from the sand K and the waves were rearing up so big that like I could feel the boat tipping, tipping right up. I thought I was going to go over. I was like, man, this is completely not an option. So I turn around and the sand cave was already like 500 meters over that way. It was way out of range already. And on the angle I would have to go, it would have to be sort of across the waves in a funny way that would have made it really dangerous. So I was like, okay, I've, I've buggered up here. I've made a bad decision, but I've, I've got to fix it somehow. So I was thinking, how am I going to fix this? And I was like, mainland, I just got to get to mainland. 
So the mainland from that sand cay straight in, in its direct line, was actually a pretty good angle to approach the waves on. So I'd sort of be surfing down the waves and if it got too hairy, I'd quickly turn off, wait for the next one to pass and then continue down. And every now and then you'd feel the boat sort of take off and start surfing and you'd see that front edge of that catamaran style hull wanting to dig in and I'd just quickly turn up. So I couldn't go faster than say about 10 k's an hour but so that went on that's a 20k run so you can imagine it took me about two hours to get close to the mainland i thought that it would get a little less rough unfortunately that wasn't the case it was about the same all the way in so we get all the way in and then it's getting dark so the sun's setting I'm, I'm i'm just i'm just repeating in my mind and this wasn't even funny by this stage sometimes some things happen and you're a bit like oh okay we can just laugh this one off this was not one of those situations this was one of those situations where you're repeating to yourself just don't lose your nerve rod just don't lose your nerve just keep heading to the mainland you're going to get there don't lose your nerve and and I'll, I'll tell you now i don't know if you've been in positions where you there is a very good chance of you losing your nerve it's it's a surprising situation to be in and like yeah and it and it actually took a lot of concentration to not not freak out about the situation I, about the situation i was in because it was it wasn't good it was a bad situation it was like yeah i'd i'd, I'd stuffed up royal so we we made, managed to battle all the way down to the mainland it's pretty much pitch black by this stage and then i had to slowly make my way along the mainland at least then i knew that i was sort of close to some land even though i don't know what good it would have done me because you know it is croc country it's pitch black it was not a good situation to be in in that tiny little boat so we slowly head at about eight k's an hour just by this stage i'd had to turn so it was basically just banging straight down waves all the way and this kept up for maybe another two hours until I got a little bit closer and then I could see the flashing light from my launch site. And it's lucky that that port has a little flashing light and I could see it and I was like, that's my beacon mate, just head towards it. So we head for another maybe half an hour or so and then this crazy southerly change just whips around all of a sudden. And the, all of a sudden the wind's blowing directly back at me, making my jo job even harder in a way because I didn't have the little run of the, the waves. And by this stage it had calmed down a little bit and all of a sudden now I was dealing with direct chop in my face. Then it starts to pour with rain. And I'm, I'm talking proper heavy southerly change wind rain. It was out of control and I was just sitting there going, what am I going to do? So as I just keep following this light, it's just flashing. And I'm just saying, don't lose your nerve, Rod. You're getting somewhere now. We're actually, we're, we're over halfway by this stage. <laughs> don't lose your nerve. This rain's belting down. Then the boat stops. And I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? And I start checking everything and I've run out of petrol. So after all of that slow going, I've, I've run out of petrol in the middle of pitch black. And so, and it's pouring with rain. So that's why I was saying yesterday, it's like, yeah, you top up your fuel tanks whenever you get a chance. So... We get the head torch out, I'm trying to aim it down, I'm trying to cover like the, uh, the, the fuel tanks and I'm trying to get it all organised so I can cover it with my body so when I've got it open no rain's getting in. We're struggling, we're getting washed around, we're spilling fuel but we get enough fuel in the tanks that I'm happy with and so we quickly get everything going again and we're back on track and we're moving in the right direction again and eventually after like another hour we finally get in and by this stage it's like 10 30 or something at night so the ordeal was done in my mind i was like far out i'm just lucky that that didn't go worse and i just sort of managed to make it through and by this stage i'm pretty much done there's still two more days in the comp by the way i think there was <laughs> and i thought let's just go home but i'm gonna have to fish somewhere on the way home so we finally get all our gear in the car after dragging it all up and uh, I'm feeling pretty sorry for myself. I hop in the car, finally all packed up and I go to start the car and I got a flat battery. <laughs> I remember walking into the bar that was just close to the ramp and just walking in with no shoes, looking like a fright. I was so fried with bloodshot eyes and just walking in and the people at the, like, the counter, like the reception, have just looked at me and gone, can we help you? And I said, look, I've just had a really rough night. <laughs> Can someone please come and help jumpstart my car? And luckily, one of the dudes there, he goes, mate, I'm about to have a break. I'll come out and help you. So big thanks to whoever you were that night because he came out. I had jumper leads, thank God. I think I'd brought them along the trip. But um, he came out, he jumpstarted my car, and I was on my way. And then I still had to go fishing for another two days. 
if anyone ever asked me, that's that's what went on. So yeah, and it didn't stop there. Actually, we still had more to go. But anyway, I guess we should uh, get cooking. I know I've said this before, but I like to cut my fish in irregular shapes. There's nothing worse than things just looking so unnaturally cut. <laughs> so there, they're about right. Keep those up there. Uh, actually, maybe we'll flower those quickly now. Flower's been in here for a bit. <laughs> Chilies, oh man, yum. Just thinking about this, this is gonna be pretty good. Okay, mint goes in. That mint, geez, that smells good. Gonna be particularly good in there. <laughs> yeah. Might as well do this leaf as well. <laughs> it doesn't feel so bad. It's hard to tell. I was worried it wouldn't be quite as ripe as I wanted it. Ah, no, it looks great. Perfect. One or two? Two? Two halves? Both halves? Might as well do be a host both halves because otherwise it's going to go bad anyway, isn't it? Nothing worse than an old avocado. Well, there is worse things. Alright, and our mango. This is uh, this sweetness. I'm really looking forward to this. After all this tropical stuff, definitely looking forward to this. <laughs> It's going to be too much stuff in the bowl, I think. <laughs> Alright, we'll try and work with it. Olive oil. We use this white vinegar, which was in the boat. <laughs> Maybe some sesame oil. Seems as we got it. Whoa! Sugar. Yeah, we've got these little packets of sugar. We'll put those in there. <laughs> these packets will do fine, since we've got them in the car. We've actually made probably a little bit too much just in there. That's right. Yep. Yeah, we'll maybe put put another bit more, a uh, little just a, a little tiny bit of soy as well. Alright, it's all combined. Now it's as simple as just tipping it on and then we're going to somehow mix it up. <laughs> just a little bit more mixing then we'll let that sit and we'll do our fish and then we'll be good to go. Just make sure we've mixed all the dressing through, get a good coating. Oh. I'm kind of taste some because. Mmm! Wow, eh? That's really good. Let me just place those guys over there. Um, what are we going to do here? We'll break the egg. I brought this and I was thinking, should or could I be bothered? But you know what? It will be perfect. Sticking with our yummy tropical theme. Fish in and we'll coat that with the coconut. Back 
a bit. Yep. Get that bag there. There's a windbreak. Bit of wind coming from the side there. a little bit more even. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that coconut smells good, doesn't it? Quick check. Oh, yeah. A little bit of flip. <laughs> yes. 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 That coconut is just now that it's heated up is just smelling so delicious. With that salt it's gonna be a match made in heaven. What are we gonna do? Are we just gonna put the fish on and just put some salsa on top or do we keep it in the bowl? Maybe we'll, we'll just put the fish down and we'll spoon some on top, see how that looks. Okay. <laughs> That's an amazing stack of fish. And we'll come over here to the salsa section. Where are we going to sit here? Well, it's sort of spilling off the edge there, so... I don't know, maybe down on this rock? Mm, yeah. Rock could be good. Oh, that's a nice height. And we'll run the salsa off the edge this way. How's that, though? Does that look good, or does that look really, really good? It's really good. <laughs> Oh, what are we going to do first? A bit of salsa, a bit of fish, a bit of everything. Try and do it with one hand. Let's just go for it like that. Oh, baby. Mmm. Oh. Man, the mango with the coconut, with the chili. Let's get that big bit of fish. Mm. That fish is amazing. Peter fish. Look at that coconut. Mm. Look at that. Parrotfish is particularly good. Super light white flesh. Big flakes. You can see why they get overfished in places. So don't. Don't spoil it. Fish in moderation. <laughs> oh boy. No, nah, this is a good one. This one's exactly what I felt like as well. As soon as I saw that giant mango, mate, I was in. I was like, mango? Yeah, because I had all this stuff for rice paper rolls and I was like, eh, a bit salty. As soon as I saw that big mango, I was like, yeah, nah, it's gonna happen. It's amazing the difference that little bit of salt on the fish made as well. Don't forget to season, because um, when I tasted that first piece, it was sort of a bit bland, but with the salt on it now, and now with the sweet, primo. I've got something really exciting coming. I don't know if everyone will find it as exciting as I am, but there's an overseas trip coming up, and these videos might take us all the way up to the start of that trip. So the next video, if not the one after that, might actually be in another country. You know what was funny actually, the lady that when I, I got the mango in Bowen and when she went to pick it up to put it in the register, she grabbed a piece of paper and picked it up like that and I went, oh you don't have to worry, like I don't, I don't care if you touch it. 
And she goes, no, 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 I'm highly allergic to mangoes. And I just looked at her and said, but you live in Bowen. It's like the capital, like the mango capital of Australia. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I know. We moved up here and I've figured it out. <laughs> anyway, see you on the next one.